Right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from sunny blue sky in San Diego. And I'm joined today by Jenny Fennig, who is in Massachusetts. Hopefully blue sky there too. It is, it's beautiful today. And Jenny specializes in empowering creative women and entrepreneurs to increase their confidence, impact money and time freedom by mixing modern with ancient practices. And what we wanted to talk to uh, talk about today is, you know, as we're obviously going through a strange collective experience right now, but it's also a very individual experience at the same time. Uh, and I think a lot of people are maybe self-reflecting for the first time in a long time. Maybe they're starting to question their future, what they really want to do. Maybe they're forced into uh, into thinking about their future because their their business has been impacted or their job has been impacted or whatever. Um, so I wanted to talk about intuition and your calling. And you have some interesting insights, uh, Jenny, about uh, intuition and, and finding your true calling. And maybe you could uh, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, well, what I have found from my own journey, and it's been a, a twisty, wild <laughs> ups and downs. And, and I think if you're really being honest, everyone can say that about their journey. Okay. Yeah. Um, that when, when I really felt like I was where I was supposed to be was when I was willing to surrender and pivot and realize that my plan wasn't always the best plan. <laughs> okay. And so that's what I feel people have an opportunity to, to really look at now is, is what was the plan that you were operating off of? And was that the thing that you did because you thought it was the thing you were supposed to do or the thing that you went to school for, or the thing that you had all this training for, or that people said, you know, this is totally the place where you're supposed to be. This is kind of like very um, safe. It's very secure. It's very, um, kind of predictable or perfect for a person like you, but you knew deep down that something was off or something was not quite right, even though maybe on paper it looked okay. You know, this, what we're all experiencing, especially here in the U.S., is, is a great, it's, it's the reckoning. It's this mm -hmm. chance to say, is this what I really want? I mean, we're all going through challenge and in some shape or form, whether it be related to our business, our families, if you have kids, that whole system is thrown up in the air around education and camps and everything yeah. just being uprooted. And so now is the chance for you to really look at things across the board in your business and your life and your family and your home and say, what do I really want now that I yeah. see what can happen when the systems get uprooted? And it's a really interesting uh, point because I was discussing this with some other people recently. And I think one of the things that very few people do is, re as you say, is really ask themselves, number one, what am I doing right now? And why am I doing, what is my motivation for doing what I'm doing right now? A lot of, a lot of people just, you know, you have a job and you go through the motions or whatever, and maybe you're saying, well, yeah, it's a good job. Uh, it's got good benefits. I bring home enough money to do whatever, but they never actually sit down and say, why am I really doing it? And am I happy with that motivation or is there something more that I'm, I need? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when you go through what we're all collectively going through right now, mm -hmm. you can't help but face that. And I want to just send love to everybody because it's <laughs> not easy. This isn't easy. I don't want to just kind of tiptoe through it. Sure. I went through this myself before the global pandemic, you know, it was a long mm -hmm. time ago where I realized the path that I was on, which was this very kind of go, go, go corporate life in New York City, doing all the right things. It just wasn't for me. It was mm -hmm. not. And I, I had everything going on. I was making more money than I ever thought that I would. And it was this horrible experience <laughs> where I just said, but it's not enough. It's not right. It's, it's just totally unsustainable. And I had to dismantle it all and rebuild. It was terrifying. My ego flipped out. <laughs> but I will say that as we've gone through 
this wild pandemic and we're still in it right now because of my business. It's an online business. I have clients all over the world. I love what I do. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to start over. I didn't have to say, oh, let me just throw this all out. And I'm so blessed for that. And I want to say, if if y'all are in it right now going, oh my goodness, what am I doing? We got to restart. Yes, it's painful. Yes, Mm -hmm. there's some real things you got to look at. You need to ensure you've got, you know, enough money to be able to handle all the shifts and changes. And then just say, you know what, I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to figure this out. And so that's something that I have learned. And certainly that connection that you have with your intuition, also known as that small, still voice within, you know, Mm -hmm. to really just get quiet and know that you did not come this far to only come this far. Okay. Like that's not the point of this wild thing (laughs) called life. So if you're in the midst of some turmoil or some shifts or some, like what is going on, where's this going to take me? It's actually something to be celebrated because you're still here. Number one, Mm -hmm. number two, you still have work to do. If your mission was done, you wouldn't be here anymore. So your mission is not complete. Yeah. And there's a couple of things that I just wanted to pick up on there. Um, Number one, as you mentioned earlier about uh, a lot of people, you say, you know, why are you doing what you're doing? What's your motivation? And when they start to unpack that, they start to say things like, well, you know, I have to do this for other people, like maybe it's for my family, or as you said, maybe this was expected of me. And, and when you unpack it, you suddenly maybe come to, the, come to the realization that you're not doing anything really for yourself or for what you're calling is you're doing things to fulfill the expectations of other people. And that's kind of ultimately you can't fulfill the expectations of other people. You have to ultimately fulfill your own expectations so then you can serve other people. Yes, yes. And to know what it is that that lights you up so that every day you want to show up for it. I mean, I have regular conversations with my husband, keeping him in the loop on what I've got going on, mm-hmm. right? Okay, this today, I really need you to be full on with the kids, okay? Right. We do yeah. a lot of tag teaming in, in my family. My husband and I both work from home. You know, his work is very much in flux. He works in sports television, you can think about that right now. <laughs> There's not a lot of sports being played uh, on that level, which is, you know, heartbreaking. Mm-hmm. But, you know, with anything, we have teams. And so in my family, it's my husband and I and our kids. And then I have a team who helps support the business. But it's a constant conversation between him and I because I am really passionate about what I do. This is the call that's been placed on my heart. And every day I choose to show up for it. And is it work? Yes. Are there things that I like doing more than others? Yes. (laughs) But I know that this is what I am here to do. And it's a great gift to know that that is what work can be. That is what work can Mm -hmm. be. And if you have kids like I do, to teach them how to find the work that they love to do. Because that's a skill. And it's a real, it requires discipline. Whether, you know, things are, you're flying high and the whole world is like, you just feel like we're all on this, you know, awesome trip. Or if things are just really, really Mm -hmm. um, challenging and a little sketchy and you're going, where is this all going? Oh my goodness. Did I really sign up for this? (laughs) It's still, you got to have that discipline to show up for what is up. And if you are not really honoring the thing that's yours to do, it just feels like drudgery. It just feels like you want Mm -hmm. to avoid it all. You want to numb out. And that's not what we all need to be doing right now. I believe it is up to the collective to right this ship. We've gone Mm -hmm. way off course. We need to all work together to, to really right the ship and get to where we all need to be as a planet. Yeah, and I think, uh, and and just just picking up what you're picking up on what you were saying there, because I think it's a it's a really critical point. And you're saying like even in your own life, right? You're teaming with your husband, right? So that uh, you're both supporting each other. And I think that's the thing that maybe a lot of people, because I believe everything begins locally anyway. But um, you know, we can pontificate about global issues till the cows come home. But I mean, it's not we're actually making zero impact on it on, mm-hmm. if we actually act locally. And I think that's probably one of the big things 
coming out of this is maybe for the first time people are teaming a lot more at home with their significant others or whatever their setup happens to be because they have to because otherwise we tend to separate our lives don't we, we tend to have like our work life and then we come home to our family life or we keep our work life very separate from our family life etc et and i think that's probably one of the biggest impacts hopefully is that people are teaming more locally and in their own homes and then you know among their you know the clo- people who are close around them mm-hmm. yeah that's a wonderful point and i would not have made it to where i am today if i you know didn't have my husband's support of just him like holding the space with me mm-hmm. and for me and for my kids too you know my yeah. oldest is 11 my youngest is 6 i also have a 9 year old but just very much keeping them in the loop about why I do what I do and that when I'm in, I have a wonderful home office. I'm grateful for that. But when I'm here and I'm not doing stuff with them, it's not because I don't want to be with them. It's because I have work that I'm really passionate about. And you know what? Mom is responsible for bringing money into our family so we can do these things and that things. And we can give to these causes that we're, you know, really passionate about. We can do our part. And so when we can really look at that, and I, I think that's what's happened too for families you know, when school shut down, there was no separating work and mm-hmm. school and then everything yeah. else. It was all this giant stew. Of, <laughs> okay, we're in this together. Let's figure it out. Let's work it out. And we had, just so you know, we've been, this is, we've been homeschooling for several years. Like we homeschooled right. before the pandemic. So mm-hmm. that was another thing that I didn't have to adjust to, although we did have some, you know, some shifts that needed to be made. Sure. But we were very much in this whole, this is an integrated thing that we're doing. And I think perhaps some of the tensions in the past was that people tried to keep everything so separate. Yeah, yeah. And you really can't. It's, it's all connected. And when you can at least keep each other in the loop about what you're doing and why, and then come back together when it's time, you know, for meals and conversation, that we can, you know, have our individual interests, the things that we're passionate about, the things that we're responsible for, and to see how they're all connected. Um, that's really, I think, one of the benefits of, of what we've all gone through, the hard mm-hmm. stuff. But to look at, I hope that we all know each other a lot more closely now. Yeah. And that even, you know, for other people, maybe you didn't take the time to really ask, well, how are you really doing? Yeah. You know, what's going on at home? We, we've been very good at these kind of surface level, level conversations, like little chit chatty. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but this, this uh, current situation, I believe has allowed us to, to kind of drop some of the, the old ways and drop, you know, it's kind of a weird concept, but like drop the yeah. mask. Although now yeah. we're all wearing masks to see. Yeah, I know. It's, it's funny. It's actually, yeah, we're dropping the mask while we're wearing the mask. Um, yes, it's a, a bizarre deal. It is. And I think uh, something you mentioned there as well, I think, is just to underline for people that idea of, of you know, it's not just teaming with your significant other or whatever. Like if you have a family and if you have kids, it's bringing them into the loop too. Because I think it's really important right now that children also understand that yeah, you know, the parents don't know everything. The parents are unsure about the future, but you're doing your best and here's here's how we're going to get through this and all of that and try and take some of the, you know, angst away. Because I, I think one of, one of the saddest parts of this whole experience has been, um, I've, you've seen some some kids that are so petrified about everything. You know, they're they're so petrified about even stepping outside the front door and their work. Mm-hmm. And we have to do a better job of, mm-hmm really like bringing our kids into the conversation and, and helping them understand that we will work through all of this and there will be something at the other end that resembles, a, that will be a far different life than they may be living right this second. Yes, absolutely. And I believe it's, we're all learning or being reminded of mm-hmm. making sacrifices that, you know, we're in the middle of transition. You know, my I had family members, ancestors and ancestors who went through horrible things yeah, yeah. world wars famines all of that and and we've been living in relatively pretty mm. easy times um yeah. certainly there's challenge but we're in this place of oh this this kind of sucks you know there's parts of it yeah. that really suck and mm. you know what this particular suckiness is not going to last forever mm. this is teaching us patience discipline faith and that 
this is a feeling of, of temporary, you know, it's a temporary thing that we will get to the other side. And I hope and pray and believe that as we get to the other side, and yes, we can teach our kids this and talk to them about this, that there will be good things that come. There will be good things. And the systems that broke, a lot of the systems that broke weren't strong systems to begin with. There were things that were inherently not just about them, not aligned about them. Mm -hmm. And so what gets rebuilt will be better. It will yeah. be better, but it's just the going through it. That's really challenging. But yeah, mm-hmm. we, I think we need to, to honor um, children and that they're mm-hmm. not adults. They're not mini yes. adults. They are children and we need to do our part. Um, and that's, I believe, you know, the connection to the intuition, our own, mm-hmm. um, that, that place of being able to hear that, that wisdom and our own place. I know you're really into... Um, you know, martial arts, like I'm very into yoga and fitness. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so much of the root of that is, is that stillness, you know, finding that place inside of yourself and coming back to, I have like a mantra that I'll play with that I share with my kids, you know, I'm healthy, I am strong, I am safe, like whatever you need to, to find your footing when Mm -hmm. things feel really out of sorts. Yeah, no, I, absolutely. And I think, you know, what I, you know, from, from martial arts, one of the things is, you know, that you, you are in competition with nobody else except yourself, right? And you're in comparison to nobody else but yourself. And you're striving every day to improve and get better, but not in relation to the person on your left or your right, it's in relation to yourself. Mm. And, uh, and I think, and I think you're right, what you said earlier, I think maybe the universe needed to give us a slap across the head a little bit, because we had become too much consumed in in silly things and with social media and too much consumed in the comparison culture and feelings of inadequacy because it looks like everybody else has stuff that we don't have and all that and i think maybe this was maybe this was the universe just saying you know you just need to focus a little bit and what you said about is your your inner voice and i think that's that's a that's something that gets lost or certainly has been lost in the frenetic world that we've created for ourselves is that we don't take time out to listen to that voice yeah. Yeah. And this was the great reset, you know, mm-hmm. the reckoning, the reset, the pause to your point, you're not necessarily seeing people going on these worldwide adventures. Now, I mean, we can't leave the United States. <laughs> <laughs> so there's no global adventures here. And so it's this whole wait, hold on. Uh, wow. And when people are forced to sit with themselves, that's when some really mm-hmm. incredible things can happen. And that's my, that's my great desire for everyone is like, who are you when you really get to know who you are? Do you like what you see? Um, Are there things that you want to shift? Are there some, you know, parts of your space, like your space in your body, your space in your home that could be made more nourishing? Is there an Mm -hmm. opportunity for you to better connect with your true nature? And for me, that's by getting out in nature. You know, I'm mm-hmm. fortunate I live in a place where, you know, I've been able to be outside really this whole time. There were times when I didn't leave my property for, you know, weeks on mm-hmm. end, months on end. It felt like forever. You know, now we can go out and about a bit more with, with modifications and some restrictions. But I have a beautiful slice of nature here. And every time I'm outside, like one of the things I've been doing, which I was never this person, is so interesting. Again, you think you're a certain way. Yeah. So I'm like this. I'm like this. Then you realize, well, maybe I'm not. What it, What would happen if I put on this new persona, this new identity? And for me, it was gardener. Like, mm-hmm. what? Gardener? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, uh, you know, we moved here from New York City. We mm-hmm. hired people to take care of our lawn because we don't know how to do that. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. then years in going, wait, hold on, maybe it would be fun for us to do some of that. And so we've really taken it over. And all during this time, I I freaking got into gardening. I mm-hmm. I we planted so much stuff. Just yesterday I went to our garden store again to get some new plants. And there's something so magical about digging up the earth, putting things in pulling yeah. stuff out that you don't need, pulling out the weeds, being intentional about what you plant. And I feel that is such a great opportunity, whether you have a garden in your space or not, be really intentional about what are you growing? What yeah. are you growing? 
Yeah, no, I, I love that because um, I'm a little bit the same, actually. I was never really into gardening, but I've become rather obsessive over some things that I've planted, recently, you know, over the last while. I tend to look at them every day and try to, you know, discern any growth <laughs> and then pat myself on the back, even though the plant is doing all the work. But anyway, um, <laughs> but but yeah, I, I, there's a few things there that you said I think is incredibly uh, powerful that I think people need to consider, and that's, you know, take a look at yourself and see whether you like what you see. I mean, it's never too late to change and you can make modifications. And maybe this is a wonderful opportunity to say, yeah, there are parts that maybe I'm not so, I don't, I don't like that much that maybe I could alter. And and the and the other part is, it's funny because you were saying about um, travel and stuff, and I did have to make an emergency trip during this, like overseas. Mm -hmm. And it's quite a bizarre experience, like going through like LAX, right? Even one of the busiest airports in the world and it's empty and it's completely mm -hmm. empty, right? And then you, but, but, which is on, on the one hand, you say, wow, um, you know, that's, that's, that's terrible. But on the other hand, you think of, there's all the frenetic, normally like people rushing through and all the business, like that's all absent for a while. So there is a little bit more stillness and you're hoping all those people who may have been traveling and running crazily through those airports are taking this time for reflection. Yeah, <clears throat> there will be major shifts. I mean, my, husband used to travel quite a bit for his work. It had shifted in the last few years, but you know, we've been talking a lot about this, just that feeling of it probably won't go back to that level that mm -hmm. it was before, because a lot of companies have seen, we don't need to have all these yes. in-person meetings and people going here and there, uh, the major expense to a company. Plus you can get a lot accomplished with this whole, sure. you know, online Absolutely. meeting thing. And it can really enhance your employees' lives when they're not needing to be away from their families as much mm -hmm. as maybe they, you all thought they needed to be before. So there's this, there, and you know, the implications on the environment when there's just not as much gas and, um, you know, planes and trains and automobiles uh, being used, you know, you want there to be some of that because mm -hmm. there are implications all around and travel is such an amazing thing and I yeah, use yeah. it greatly. But, um, you know, we're all being forced to really look at, you know, what, what do we want to create moving forward and how does your work play into that? Our work mm. is playing into everything that we're seeing now. And wow. Yeah, <laughs> I I'll tell you between 2020 was going to be big, but not yeah. like this. <laughs> I tell you between between um, between being in airports and and uh, having to switch flights and stuff, sixteen hours in a mask will test your your okay. love of travel. <laughs> I bet. Yeah, that whole thing is: are the costs worth it to you now? Mm -hmm. Like going yeah. through everything that you're going through, how much do you really want to go on that trip? <laughs> <laughs> well, I can I can speak firsthand that sixteen hours in a mask, you know, twice within the within the space of a week will will test your patience somewhat. Yeah, I bet. Mm. I bet. What it what in I mean I think maybe more people I've seen a lot of people in the US doing like R V trips. They're doing yeah, that yeah. they wouldn't have done that before. But you know, some cool opportunities for you to connect Absolutely. with whoever you're with on that trip in ways that you wouldn't have before. It's almost this kind of back to basics. Yeah. Thing no, that's I know I I love on. it. And and as you say, and maybe there's stuff that's like you know a half a day's drive away or a day's drive away from where you live that you never even considered looking at and you realize right. that your whole environment is rich in wonderful things to see and experience because we're always like oh let's go to the far side of the world we gotta go yes totally totally it was like when i was living in new york city and we were moving I, we decided to move i'd been there for 11 years and the when we decided to move until the time that we moved it was about three months I mm -hmm. did more in those three months than I probably did in the yeah. 11 years in terms of seeing cultural institutions, going to this place, going to that place, because I was leaving. Mm -hmm. And it's that, that what you just said is, gosh, there's so many awesome things semi close to you that you didn't consider before because it was mm -hmm. too close. It was just too, too close. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's like you love that when people come to visit and they say, oh, I want to see such and such. And you go, yeah, no, I've never been there. Yeah, we go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yes. Well, listen, listen, Jenny, this has been fantastic. Uh, all of Jenny's information will be in her contributor bio here. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. Okay, great. Well, as you mentioned, I am an intuitive business coach. I work with female entrepreneurs 
uh, mostly coaches, therapists, consultants, healers who want to make money with their magic. So my whole mm-hmm. passion is teaching women how to grow their business online. It's such an opportunity now with, you know, even before the pandemic, this is such a wonderful um, gift to be able to work where you want, when you want, with whom you want. I've been doing it for over a decade now. And I believe that when we really are in tune with the gifts that we have and we share them with our people, that's how we make this world a better place. Um, I just feel so blessed to be alive right now. Yes, there are a lot of hard things going on and we don't need to uh, skip over those things, but there are so many things that we can do to make a difference. And when we really step into who we are as business people, and helping through these wonderful tools of technology. Wow. It's, it's just an incredible uh, opportunity. And I feel like we are going to rewrite the future. We really mm-hmm. have this opportunity to say, okay, how do I want to serve? Where do I want to serve? Who do I want to work with? For those of you who are parents like I am, you know, I homeschool my kids. I mean, if you would have told me when I was in my New York City life, like, oh, this is what you're going to be doing, I Mm -hmm. would have just fallen over, just not believed you. But I do it. I do it. And my husband and I, we work from home. He does his own thing. I do my own thing. And I want to just give everyone that reminder. If there is this call in your heart right now to change something up or to take the thing that you do and make it better designed so that whatever happens next in this world that we live in, you have a solid business that you can show up for every single day. So I feel, you know, so grateful to talk to you today. My passion is to help people make money with their magic online. Excellent. That's a great mission. Uh, listen, Jenny, thanks very much. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine and Pipeline of CRM. See you all again soon.